I took peaceful Pokemon from the Kitakami region, transported them to Paldea, and forced them to become Pokemon champions. Well, at least that's the plan. As I attempt to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Scarlet using just Pokemon from the Kitakami region. Will these peaceful Pokemon be capable of taking down all the difficult battles in Paldea? Well, we're about to find out. And here are the rules. I can only catch one Pokemon per area in the land of Kitakami. I bring those Pokemon back here to Paldea and attempt to beat every single battle with them. I aim to acquire every badge and beat the AI robot lady in the depths of Area Zero. But if a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead. And I won't be using items in battle and of course set mode is on. All right, let's do this. So to begin, we complete the intro, get to school and soon after get a call. Uh, hello? You've won an all expenses paid trip to the land of Kitakami. Sweet! I'm sure this totally legit phone call will get me exactly where I need to go. But to my surprise, we actually do end up in Kitakami. Nice. See kids, that's why you should always trust what some random dude on the phone tells you. Never trust a scam caller if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Arriving in Kitakami, I complete the introduction and go to acquire my first Pokemon. It would have been nice to get a starter Pokemon I could use, but oh well. Oh, hey Jock. How you doing? You've got one of three Kitakami starters in this egg? Oh, heck yeah, I'll take it. Oh, the egg's hatching, but what is it gonna hatch into? Our new starter Pokemon that you get for being a Kitakami resident like myself is a Chimcha. Let's freaking go. Because it's a female Chimcha, I name it Diana. But can you guess the naming theme for this video? Correct answers win a free trip to Kitakami. There is no free trip to Kitakami. Do not believe everything you hear online. Before heading back to Paldea, I wanted to catch one more Pokemon. So I make my way to the Apple Grove. I found a special terror bug Applin here, so I decided to catch it and name it Kate. But RJ, Applin isn't a Kitakami exclusive. Well, yes, you're right. So I better evolve it straight away. So I head over to the glazed apple stand to purchase a delectable treat for my Applin to enjoy. All right, let's use this syrupy apple on Applin. We'll evolve into the beautiful Diplin straight away. We already have a Diplin, baby. Let's go. Is it messed up for me to say I actually kind of want to eat this thing now? Heading back to Paldea, we must take on Katie and her bugs. Kitakami is filled with bugs, so these Pokemon should know how to handle them. Rolling around this gigantic olive, Chimcho is inspired to evolve into Monferno at just level 14. I forgot these starters evolve so early. This is going to be great for the bug gym. <laughs> Huh, well, uh, I guess that was expected. Our next fight is with a titanic crab. So I decided to pit the Paldean crab against the Kitakami crab, Corefish. So flying back to Kitakami to the Mosfell Confluence, I catch one and name it Kara. In this battle of the crabs, who will win? Of course it was Corefish and its beautiful bubble beam. The second fight was a little bit more concerning since the Paldean crab did ingest some illegal substances, not fight legal, may I add. So I send out my Diplin to finish the job with a seed bomb. The town of Artisan is where we make our way to next and is home to Brassius, the next gym leader. Yeah, he might be really good with whips and good with grass types, but he's unprepared for Kitakami's greatest Pokemon, Monferno. Does this guy not know that that's actually from Sinnoh? Shh, they'll never know. Brassius' first Pokemon is a small little Petalil, but my fire monkey burns this and his little olive into ash. Is that a pseudo wudu or are you just happy to see me, Brassius? It was a pseudo wudu and Monferno takes it out, no problem. We only have three Pokemon still. I feel like we need to get a few more. So back on the plane to Kitakami I go to meet up with Kieran to take pictures of signposts. And he asked me to meet up with him at the Ogre's Den. But I came here to look for Pokemon, so he's gonna have to wait. I pick up a Gligar and its Razor Fang in the Paradise Barrage, which I named Shaira, and a Geodude on Oni Mountain, which I named Hal. Uh, Kieran, I'll be back later. I've got some things to do in Paldea. These plane trips back and forth gotta be expensive. How can I even afford this? Bird up. Hello. The Titanic Pheasantipity is up next. Um, actually, I'm a bombardier. Shut up, bird. Geodude, we're about to roll up and roll out on this fool. Geodude, stop, stop, use stop, roll out. Stop, 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 stop. I know in my shiny only run, which if you haven't seen, you should totally watch. I said bombardier always scares me, but this time I feared nothing. Taking down both phases with ease. 
rollout's kind of OP. On to the first star base we go. Really? Your name's Clive? You think some glass is gonna trick me? I come from Kitakami. People are always concealing their identities. I know who you really are, Clive, and I know your secrets too. I can almost taste it. <laughs> Anyway, let's go beat this gear Como guy. I entered the battle one level under the level cap, and this would prove to be a massive mistake. Monferno fails to secure a quad effective mock punch on the Pornyard, landing us deep in the red, and against a giant car, Monferno needs to be switched out. I sent out Gligar since it does have Fury Cutter, but we only managed to get two off before needing to switch out. I send in my Terror Bug Diplin next and do some solid damage with Infestation, but I need to switch it as well because I got my special defense drop. So I swap to Geodude who nearly faints on entrance, so I switch back to Diplin where we get our special attack drop. But fortunately get the Starmobile into the red, surviving a Wicked Talk with just 4 HP. All I have left now is Corefish, and I don't have a lot of faith in it, but we do dodge a Snarl and do get it one hit from death, but if it lands its Snarl, I'd probably die. But if it went for, I don't know, maybe Screech, that'd be nice. Huh, sometimes I guess you can be lucky. Take the L gear, Gomo. Taking down this totally legit student, our Gligar evolves into Gliscor, and now we're moving on to my favorite city in Paldea, Lavincia. Arriving in Lavincia, Nimona challenges me to a battle, which I was not prepared for. Diplin knocks out a Rock Ruff and Pormi, and in comes Crocolor. So I switch over to Corfish, who gets put to sleep. So I swap to Geodude, who should be able to finish the job. Oh, we're good. We take it out next turn. We drop its speed. We don't fall asleep until next turn. We good. Wait. It outspeeds us? Surely Incinerate doesn't... Surely Incinerate doesn't knock us out. Surely. I can't believe it. I can't believe I've just done that. We've lost Geodude! With the loss of Geodude greatly weighing on my mind, I head back to Kitakami and end up catching a Spoink. I named it John, but then I realized that this isn't even a Kitakami exclusive, so I destroy it. But fortunately, I never even used the thing. Hey RJ, did you get lost? I've been waiting here for ages. Yeah, yeah, shut up Kieran, fight me. I don't know what the hell you just said. Heading back to the town, we get our traditional Kitakami Jinbei, and damn, this is way cooler than those lame-ass school uniforms I've been wearing. I visit the local festival after destroying Carmine in a battle and run into a cute little character who drops its mask and runs away. That's Ogapon, the star of the Teal Mask DLC, and I like that one. I think I might get one of those myself. Okay, and with that, I think we should head back to Paldea. Did you touch grass yet, Iono? No? I'm not surprised. We take down a Watchall with Gliscor and swap to Diplin to deal with Belly Bolt. It took three Dragon Breaths, but everything Belly Bolt had, we quad resisted. Luxio in next has Bite, but Dragon Breath knocked it into the red. We get Flinch the next turn, which is annoying, but we take it out after that. Weak though, I get Diplin out of there ASAP because Miss Magius is very scary and quick. Miss Magius terrestrializes. It goes for Confused Ray. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That is actually good. I'm happy with that. It uses Charge Beam. But, we switch to Gliscor who resists it and we're all good. <laughs> I've done it. Get baited. Your boy Gliscor resists that. I think we just have to risk Poison Jabs. I think that's... Oh, Hex. Does that do increased damage? No, it doesn't. Oh, we snap out of Confusion first turn. Let's go, Shaira. Okay, we should be good. We should be good. We should be good. Oh my god. This thing's trolling. Don't. Oh my god. Don't do it, Shaira. Do not do it. Oh, thank the lord. I... This little Miss Magius, she's a naughty girl, she is. Gliscor freaking did it, went off. But, if I hadn't done that uh, electric switch in strat, we would have died there. We would have we lost Gliscor. So, 
to the victor goes the spoils. Oh, oh, oh. Taking on the star base next, I set up the rain with Corefish, weakening Torkoal's firepower. This leaves only the Starman build, and switching over to Gliscor, we bulldoze it three times, and down it goes. Easy peasy. The second Starmobile is officially defeated. <laughs> that was actually really easy. I'll take that. The Steel Titan was next on the chopping block. Oh shit, wasn't watching. Shit. 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 Oh god. We hit five times, we did no damage. Headbutt. Okay, that's fine. Two Terra Flame Wheels takes out the lurking Steel Titan. I wasn't even worried for a moment. Totally didn't mess up. Click and Fury swipes at the start. No one saw that, so it's all good. The second fight went about the same, minus the misclick on the Fury swipes. Burned? Confused? Hit yourself. Go on, do it. Ah, oh, Boo. <laughs> Dodge the attack, so... Doesn't matter, and it goes down to the Grass Knot. Beautiful. Round of applause for Orthworm, the worst titan in the game. <laughs> Jetting on back over to Kitakami, I add a charge bug to the team, naming it Barry. I evolve it with a Thunderstone. I think we have a Thunderstone in here. Yeah, we do, which is perfect, because we can evolve Charger Bug into Vicar Volt straight away for this gym, which is going to be perfect. So we got Crawdorn and Vicar Volt. Damn, Vicavolt looks really good in this game. Like, I was using it shiny in the previous video, which if you haven't seen, you should totally check out. And that looked really cool, but even the base looks really cool. I hadn't seen it yet. And also, Corefish evolved into Crawdon, which is fine, I guess. But we're about to take on a water gym. So Vicavolt will be way more useful. His first Pokemon is a Veluza, which I forgot had Pluck, which deals significant damage to Diplin. I retaliate with a Syrup Bomb, which I hope would do more, and drop its speed enough for us to outspeed it, but it lands another Pluck, landing us at just 34 HP, but we do knock it out the following turn. Lugtrio in next hits us with a headbutt and flinches us, so I'm forced to switch out. I send in Crawdon to weaken the Lugtrio and switch to Vicavolt to finish the job. This leaves just the lame Alolan Crab all by itself. We should outspeed this, right? Okay, he moves first. This is bad. This is bad. Oh! Barry surviving on two! Let's go, Barry! What the heck? Okay, I was fully ready to lose Vicavolt instantly there, but we didn't. Oh my god, that's insane. Let's go! Barry the Vicavolt coming in clutch there. That was good. Where to next? Ah, the Poison Starbase. And after taking out Fusey Tube at the gate, we blast through Atticus's Pokemon with Gliscor. Turns out a Terra Boosted Bulldoze can one-shot everything minus the final Starmobile. But even that stood no chance to the power of Gliscor. Flame Charge? We take those. No biggie, you're trying to get your speed back, but if I'm dropping your speed with Bulldoze anyway, it's not going to change anything. Goodbye, the Starmobile. More like the Loser Mobile. Ha <laughs> ha Heading over to meet Larry for our gym challenge, it's now that our starter finally evolves. Oh, yes! Diana is evolving! Oh, yes! Oh my god, I love this! Dude, tell me Infernape isn't one of the sickest starters ever. Like, it's just sick. I decided to go find Sword Stance to slap onto Infernape, which would be massive to increase its attack. Larry specializes in normal Pokemon, which is so boring, but people relate to Larry for some reason and really like him. I guess they have a boring life. Anyway, my plan was to set up the Sword Stance and roll. All we had to do was survive as Kamala. Well, people love Larry, but I don't love Larry because he can actually be very brutal with his star Raptor. But with our brand new super cool looking Infernape, I have a plan that could just deal with all of this really easily. So as long as this thing doesn't put us to sleep, we should be outspeeding every single one of his Pokemon because Infernape's really fast and has a speed nature. Plus, if we land, okay, okay. We took a lot of damage from the slam there, but that's fine. Now, we just roll with close combat on everything. That's my plan. Double attack boosted with the sword stance, we should be good. We should be good. Close combat should one-shot literally everything. Doesn't matter if our defense falls, because we're gonna get one-shot anyway now, so if, Infer if Inferno 
takes a hit, it's dead no matter what. I have faith in it that it's going to outspeed and out damage everything, especially with close combat. Dedun Sparse, it ain't a three segment, so it dies. Easy peasy. I wonder if he has a Greedent. Nope, he has a Star Raptor. You'd, you'd expect him to have at least four Pokemon since it's like a normal gym, super easy. He has a Greedent on the back wall, doesn't even use it. Wait, you reckon that's a drawing of like Kitakami in the background? That would be kind of cool if it was. Okay, it did drop my attack by one, so that could be bad. Well, I think we still outspeed. We should definitely outspeed it. It's just whether one stage attack boost, critical, uh, not critical, super effective close combat at, you know, very high base damage knocks out Star Raptor. We're about to find out. I am very nervous. Fingers crossed. I never doubted it for a moment. I never doubted it for a moment. Inferno's got this. <laughs> I would never. Okay, and that's our uh, next gym badge. Perfect. See you, Larry. Thanks for the meal. Next on the agenda was the ghost gym. Just my opinion, but I think this lady kind of sucks at rapping. And her name is Rhyme. That's kind of embarrassing. This is the only time we have proper two-on-two -two double battles in this game, so we've got to enjoy it while we can. A Night Slash from Crawdon manages to knock out a Banette in one hit, and Vicavolt breaks Mimikyu's disguise. Sending in Houndstone, it sadly goes for Dig, but we do manage to knock out Mimikyu with a Terra Thunderbolt. And in comes Toxtricity. Now this thing can be very deadly and knock Crawdon very easily with an electric move. All right, Rhyme terastalizes Toxtricity. We do outspeed, get the Night Slash, one shot the Ghost Toxtricity, perfect. Nah, we'll, we'll leave it for now. No! Barry got crit! No! Oh! That is bull! Uh, why? Cruel World, why did you take Barry from us? So soon! Crawdon manages to finish off the ghost dog, but it's too little too late. Damn, he would have been a great help for the next gym. What a shame. One Pokemon down, I head back to Kitakami and catch a Cramorant in the Felhorn Gorge, who I name Arthur. To my surprise, this thing's ability actually comes in clutch in multiple battles. But since I'm here, I might as well continue our adventure with Kieran and Carmine. I meet up with Carmine and her grandpa to learn more about the Till Mask and Ogre Pond, but Carmine makes us lie to Kieran for no damn reason. The worst sister of the year award goes to you, Carmine. Congratulations. We take on Kieran at the final signpost, which was super easy, and take our picture. Heading up to the Loyal Three Shrine, a great purple light erupts from within, and the three come forth. What are these guys' names again? Onky Donkey, Swaggy Daggy, and Pekka Pikey, or something like that? I don't know. Whoever named these guys is so lazy, but they're up to no good, and track the friendly ogre up to its cave. We defeat Monkey Donkey Kong and check on Ogre Pond. Thankfully, it's okay, but it has had its other three masks stolen, so off I go to track them down. I defeat all of them with ease and obtain every single mask, but fighting Pheasantipity, my team starts to border on the level cap, so after defeating the three Titanic Pokemon, we go take on an actual Titan. Great Tusk, the Ground Titan. You know how before I said Cramorant's ability would come in handy? Well, this is just one of those times. We take a rapid spin from Great Tusk, which boosts its speed, but we dive under the water using Dive, dealing a little bit of damage, but coming up with a fish in its mouth. Next turn, I terastalize it and barely survive the rapid spin. But when Cramorant gets hit with a fish in its mouth, it spits that thing out right at the enemy, dealing damage and dropping the defense of the enemy. This allows us to finish the job with a drill pack the following turn and move on to battle two, where yet again, Cramorant with the assistance of Gliscor knocks it out. If only the next fight was that easy. Meet Tulip. She's a psychic specialist and a devil in disguise. Leading with Ferugarov, we take it down with two X scissors, dodging its Zen headbutt. God of War in next would be problematic, but we do have Poison Jab, so it's not problematic. And we're not a poison type, so we're not weak to it. So, this should be solid, but not solid enough to knock it out. And in return, we get hit with a psychic, dropping us to half. 
We take out Gardevoir on the next turn, and in comes Spathra. A Spathra sounds like a disease, I'm not gonna lie. Fearing Gliscor's life, I switch to Diplin, who takes a Psychic on entrance. Terrestrializing it, we use Infestation, which knocks it out, and in comes her final Pokemon, Florges. Now it's gonna Terrestrialize Psychic, so Infestation will be good, but I'm thinking we click Recover first, then Infestation, then Recover again. I feel like... Oh shit, it might outspeed us. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, this was a mistake. No, this was a mistake. We're about to lose... We're about to lose Diplin. Bro. I knew right after I did it that that was stupid as well. Far out. No! But the suffering doesn't even end there. I send in Crawdon next, and... Crunch will take it out. I don't think... I should have terrassed a lot. Well, this is going well. Oh, brother. Cramorant diving underwater outspeeds Floor just landing a critical hit, and after spitting a fish at it and lowering its defense, we do manage to finally take it out. What a horrible display. We're left with only three Pokemon, and to make it even worse, we only have a couple of encounters left in Kitakami, so we really cannot afford to take any more deaths. But, maybe, just maybe, if I can catch one special Pokemon, we may have a chance. And that Pokemon is Ogapon. Oh, hey Garen, you want to battle to see you can catch it? Well, unlike last time, I desperately need it. So, I'm going to have to destroy you. Well, good job, Cramorant. Winning the fight, I earn the right to catch Ogapon. But to do that, I'll need to beat all four mask variants. The first being its Hearth Flame form. And okay, go off Cramorant, goddamn. And so he does, one-shotting every single form, landing Ogapon in a ball and on the team. Welcome aboard, Courtney. Taking Ogapon all the way to Paldea, we ascend the Glacido Mountains and get ready to take on the Ice Gem. The amazing thing about Ogapon is that it has some great type versatility with its masks. So I transform it into its fire type form and begin the battle. I am super hyped to see this special terrestrialization form in battle. Let's go. Oh, it looks so cool, man. Okay, I'm actually, I'm actually in love with this. Ivy Cudgel. Yo. Okay, we may have lost two Pokemon in that uh, Psychic Gym fight, but now, we have the amazing Ogapon on side and with the Ivy Cudgel, which we can change into any type we want. Well, not any type, but four types. Super strong, super strong Terra ability with its giant Terra mask. We just destroy Pokemon. Goodbye, Frostmoth. Goodbye, Bear Tick. So Titan is in next and one bonk to the head using Ivy Cudgel knocks it out. Alteria fares no better and down it goes to another Ivy Cudgel. Smack. See ya. Guys. Ogapon may have just become one of my favorite Pokemon. I'm not gonna even lie. I actually love her. She's so cute. Her story's sad, adorable, and she's strong. What more can you want? With every gym beaten, I could now take on the league. But first, I wanted to finish off the Starbase and the final Titan. RJ, you do know you only have four Pokemon, right? Good point. Let's go catch some more. Running out of encounters in Kitakami, I was hoping to catch one of the loyal three to add to the team. But turns out these guys are level 70, so we can't use them. So instead at the crystal pools I caught a coughing, who I named Clark, and in the timeless woods caught a dust glob. I named this guy Bruce, and already having a reaper cloth, I evolved it into Dust Noir. Dust Noir was a bit over the level cap for the fairy base, so we left it in the box for now, but we didn't need it anyway. An Ivy Cudgel knocks out Azumarill, or take his first Pokemon with ease, as he sends in Wigglytuff. Same goes for that, but Dash Bond might have access to a fire move, so to not risk my new favorite Pokemon's life, I switch to Weezing. And although I utterly despise Weezing because of the amount of times this thing has exploded on me, it is extremely useful against a Fairy Specialist, as it knocks out the Dash Bond and Stummer Bill without a problem. All right! All right, all right, all right. This fairy star base is defeated. We're moving on to the Dragon Titan. Even though we have to fight a Water Titan twice and then a Dragon Titan. Anyway, moving on. Chowing down on some noodles, the Titan Tatsugiri gets swallowed up by the Dondozo, but Ivy Cudgel absolutely decimates the Dondozo. You'd think Tatsugiri would be a Kitakami exclusive, 
But I guess that thing was eaten. Oh, I guess not. I guess we have to defeat this thing as well. I know this thing has access to icy winds, so I swap out Ogre Pond and send in Cramorant. Diving underwater, we deal barely any damage with dive, but do get a fish in the mouth. That's important. Gruden lands a critical in the takedown and does a lot of damage, but ends up fainting to a muddy water. Hitting us with the icy wind, we spit the fish at it, dropping its defense, oh. but find ourselves at low health. So we swap back to Ogre Pond to finish the job. Aw, oh, my boss, it feels better. Who cares? My Ogre Pond had its trainer slaughtered, was bullied and outcast for a thousand years, only for those evil Pokemon who stole its mask to be worshipped and then brought back to life to torment it even more. I don't want to hear it, Arvin. Shush. Before we could take on the league, I had but one more main battle to complete, and that was our battle with Aerie, the captain of the fighting Starbase. Aerie is a very strong trainer, and fighting Pokemon can be especially offensive. Her first Pokemon is a Toxicroak, but my Gliscor has Acrobatics, which one-shots the frog. Down goes Toxicroak, but in comes Annihilate now. Now, Annihilate was the other one that I was very scared of. It does have Rage Fist. I think Acrobatics is fine. We do out speed, and we one-shot it. Cool. I'll take it. <laughs> take that, Annihilate. Can't be mad if you're dead. Lucario next does resist the acrobatics, but Gliscor has access to Earthquake now, which one-shots it easily. The Simeon also faints from acrobatics, leaving just her car. And finally, Revavroom. The big car itself, if it manages to get Gliscor low, we have a good swap alternative. We actually have two good swap alternatives, so we'll see what happens here. Shift gear can be concerning since it does raise its speed and damage, not just one. And it's sharply on the speed, so it's definitely going to be permanently outspeeding every single one of our Pokemon. But... Oh no, it rose its defense. Okay, that's fine. We don't take it out next turn, but as long as it doesn't do a lot of damage... We're good. <laughs> Gliscor, let's go. Gliscor takes it out next turn, right? And it dropped its speed. We do be good, baby. Acrobatics, take out the Calf Starmobile. And that is our final battle completed on the main roads of all three chapters. We've just got to take on the Elite Four, beat the champion, beat Nimona. Beat these guys, stupid Lydia, Cassiopeia, and of course Arvin, and then head into Area Zero. I guess Pokemon from Kitakami are good enough to get every badge in the game, but can they become champions? The first Elite Four member is a Ground Specialist. Ogapon, terrestrialize with your Teal Mask and do your thing. The next Elite Four member fared no better, with Infernape terrestrializing and knocked out every single one of her Steel Pokemon. Next up was Larry, again. And Ogabon sporting its cornerstone mask was able to one-shot all of his flying Pokemon with the rock, Ivy Cudgel. Hassel's dragon Pokemon are a little more scary, but I terrestrialize Ogapon Rock and knock out his first Pokemon Noivern, dodging its super fan. Dragal, Haxorus, and Flapple follow soon after, falling to the Ivy Cudgel, leaving just his back Excalibur. I land the Ivy Cudgel but fail to secure the kill as it goes for Glaive Rush. This does a lot of damage, but I did survive, and I would have been able to knock it out. But I ran out of PP on Ivy Cudgel. So forced to switch, I send in Gliscor and pray it doesn't one-shot us. Oh my god, that was so close! But Gliscor outspeeds it and knocks it out with Earthquake, securing my battle with the champion. Now the champion is a whole nother beast. With Aspathra as her lead, I send in Dusknoir. I believe Dusknoir has a good enough physical offensive stat where Phantom Force should one-shot it? We'll see. Might two-shot, but with this Lumina Crash, that could be a problem, because if it did that much with one, it might be able to... Please one-shot it, actually. Bruh. Oh my god, there's no way it doesn't one-shot. That's crazy. Oh, we do get health back with that, though. Oh, we, we, we should be able to take our Lumina Crash. Dropping Bruce to just 34 health, we finish it off with a Dark Pulse next turn. And in comes King Gambit. King Gambit counters us with the Cow Tau Cleave. Koto Cleave? How do you even say that? I, I still don't know, and I love King Gambit, but it's besides the point. All right. Um, Inferno Close Combat takes it out quite effective. We got it. Easy. Done with. Close Combat will one-shot King Gambit. We definitely outspeed down it goes. 
Avalug in next might not seem scary on the surface since we are super effective against it, but it does have access to Earthquake and has an insane defense stat. So I decided to switch to Gliscor predicting the Earthquake, which we of course dodge, and then switch to Weezing who knows Heatwave. I feel good about that, I think Heatwave takes it out. It doesn't. But it avalanched! Instead of Earthquake! Okay, I'll take it! Earthquake probably would've took us out there! Okay! <laughs> no complaints from me, Heatwave finish off Avalog. We like that. Ivy Cudgel takes out the Go-Goat and in comes Veluza. Foolishly going for Throat Chop instead of Power Whip, we fail to take it out and... Oh, never mind. I was never even scared. I was never scared. I... Never even scared. <laughs> I never doubted you for a moment, Ogapon. Not a single second. Finally, Glamora. Now, in practice... Vine Whip or whatever, the Power Whip, will take it out. But I also don't necessarily want to risk it, because it does have Sludge Wave. And we could just switch to Cramorant. No, uh, that's flying. Could switch to Gliscor. So it is Terra Rock. Sludge Wave is fine. We resist that. Let's, yeah, 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 yeah. We terrestrialize. We terrestrialize. We definitely outspeed. We lose our uh, our weakness to the Terra Blast. So even if we don't kill it, which I think we will, it will be able to survive a, a Terra Blast from it. Right? We will never know because Earthquake does enough. And you know what? That's fine by me. <laughs> Beautiful! Gita, get the hell out of here. We're moving on to Namona and uh, Cassiopeia and uh, that loser Arvin. Arvin was the first on that list, of which Infernape rolled. We just set up with Sword Stance and punched everything. Moving on to Cassiopeia, she wasn't that much harder until her final Pokemon, Sylveon, came in. Oh, it boosts the stat. That is actually insanely cool. So Cornerstone boosts its defense. Oh, that's sick. Cornerstone defense, half flame attack, wellspring defense, and teal mask speed. Cool. So if you're using half flame mask and boost your attack, you just can roll very easily. Oh, I've got a cute little little hat on. Yeah, well I've got a giganto mask that's absolutely fiending for the kill because of their attack drop it doesn't but that, that's fine we'll take it out next turn regardless oh we crit let's go and that's how easy it is baby goodbye penny yeah but namona was next and this fight can be brutal i have lost a few pokemon to her in the past so i always keep my guard up around her all right namona let's see what we got first in is her lichen rock and I, of course, knew that she was going to send that out, so I led with Infernape. Now, Lycanroc is generally pretty fast, so I'm thinking we don't risk setting up the Sword Stance and we just close combat it. I think that's probably the smart play. Oh! We outspeed it! I, I was not expecting that. Oh, yes! Flex those muscles, Infernape. Orthworm in next is obviously weak to the close combat as well, so we'll just do that again. Here. Hold these punches! Goodbye, Orthworm. Nice and easy. Gudra, I think, does have a water move. Like, Aqua Tail or Muddy Water, I think, from memory. Yeah, we go into Dust Noir. Dust Noir has Ice Punch. Should be able to take hits. Dust Noir is actually very, uh, especially bulky as well, so this should be able to take it. Well, we're about to see. Oh yeah! Uh, then we can retaliate with the Ice Punch. Okay. We can take one more of those if Ice Punch doesn't take it out, which it doesn't. And we get a little bit of health back. Just, okay. <laughs> I was confident, but you know, sometimes if it high rolls or crits, things bad things can happen. Good job, Dusk Noir. I love how there's a smiley face on its back. It's actually kind of adorable, but also it lures in children. 
So, I guess that's bad. Gliscor resists it, so it probably goes for like, what, electric... What's it called? Double shock? Is that, a, is that its move? Yeah! <laughs> We don't get hit by those, baby. We absorb that. Earthquake should take it out. Yeah, I would say so. It outspeeds! Oh, oh my god. 35 HP. That was almost... Ice Punch is quite effective. I didn't even realize it had Ice Punch. Let alone that it would outspeed Gliscor. I'm just glad we didn't die. I just never noticed that. I'm actually not sure on this. Because the thing is... Dunsparce has Hyper Drill, which is super effective against Infernape, which it used. Please don't kill it. Oh! We lived a crit! I'll take it, but close combat should take it out, right? We definitely had speed. Yeah, okay, we good. Close combat should take it out. Cool, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised we lived a drill run freaking crit. That's insane. Damn, Infernape, you're kind of, kind of a beast! Skeledurge, the final one, alright. The, the Courtney switch here probably clicks Earth Power, right? You'd, you'd assume. Or Shadow Ball. Predicted, baby! I said it was gonna use Shadow Ball, which we take. Okay, then, it probably clicks so Torch Song, we Drastalize Water, Ivy Cudgel, take it out, it's over. GG. GG, Nimona, it's done. My beautiful girl, Courtney, gets her gigantic mask and she absolutely destroys your Pokemon. Goodbye, Skeledosh. Get out the club, Courtney! Smack that thing in the head! Yay! Goodbye, Skeledosh. Well, that went well. With these three defeated, we can head down into Area Zero and take on the big bad paradox robot, AI Sider. To get there though, we'll need to battle a few Paradox Pokemon on our way down and deactivate the locks in the control rooms. While doing so, I did stumble upon this guy as well. Look guys, it's a shiny Garganacle. Sometimes this thing, these things happen, but it ain't a Kitakami exclusive. I guess I'll catch it, but I'm not happy about it. <laughs> Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and join the Discord, and I'll give it to someone who does. Arriving at the entrance to the Zero Lab, we take on waves of Pokemon and make our way inside. All we have to do now is beat this robot. Can the Pokemon of Kitakami protect Paldea by shutting down the machine? Let's find out. Alright, it's on! AI Sada Lady from the Past Robot Lady versus the man, the myth, the legend, the ogre and its trainer from Kitakami. Look at us down there! Oh yeah, we're ready for this, we got this. Kitakami always prevails. All right, Diana, go! All right, uh, well, what I'm gonna do is just click Raging Fury. We should outspeed. We should take it out very easily. Goodbye, Slitherwing. Brute Bonnet? Why would you send in Brute Bonnet next? I'll take it, because we already set up the Raging Fury, so we can just roll straight into the next one. We could get through this without losing Inferno. I was happy to lose him here, but... I guess we might not have to. Brute Bonnet down as well. Sandy Shocks. We are going for turn three. I don't know how much damage this does. Half. And now we're confused. What does it use? Earth Power? Okay, it probably takes us out. Living on five. Living on five. I think we're going to Gliscor. Yeah, that's definitely the play. We're good. We save Inferno. It doesn't die. I like that. Diana was amazing this whole run, so... No Earth Power today! We get those! Goodbye Sandy Shock to an Earthquake from Gliscor. Screamtail. Okay, now that's Fairy Psychic. I could Poison Jab it, right? Bruce, get in there, my man! Ice Punch? We take those, baby. Yes, we freaking do. Hitting back with the Phantom Force. Well, I guess next turn. Screamtail goes for player off. We dodge it because we're in the Phantom Zone. Phantom Force? Almost. You can't see me because I'm in the Phantom Zone. <laughs> Goodbye, Screamtail. I think this is where we make the switch. I think we go into Courtney and Terrastalize Courtney. It's only fair to Terrastalize Courtney to finish it off. I think it's a, it's a good idea, a good play. Ooh, that kind of did more than I would have thought. Look at that! That mask is so cool. I only just noticed the eyes have spinning terror stones in them. That's really cool. Okay, Ivy Cudgel should take it out. Yeah. 
Goodbye, Fluttermane. I'm gonna be really upset if if Ogapon dies here at the end. But uh, we we cannot afford to make a switch here. I say we just go for the rock, the the rock Ivy Cudgel and pray. All right, Ivy, Ivy Cudgel it is. Ooh, we could Spiky Shield then Ivy Cudgel. That is actually a very smart play. Okay, we we put up the the Spike Shield, put up the Spike Shield, we take the hit and deal a little bit of damage in return. Oh, we don't? Also, it damages any attacker that makes direct contact. Maybe it missed. Well, it's over. Courtney, no! Ah! <laughs> oh, rip to the goat, Ogapon. We love you. I love you so much. You were so useful in this whole run. Very much appreciated your service. We're going to send in Diana. I think... Uh, close combat should be enough to take it out, and we will be done. You're too slow. This thing outspeeds Infernape? Okay, this is actually this is actually scary now. Oh god. May we go for the toxic? We do be floating the air with the air balloon. I'm I am gonna toxic it. Hopefully we can take a dragon claw. We do, okay. Land the toxic, okay. We basically just secured our win. Okay, well, we're going down next turn, so we'll just sledge bomb it. For some reason, no, yeah, earthquake. Good. Thanks for nothing. Actually, you know what, Weezing? You might have actually just saved the run unironically with the toxic. It might have actually just saved the run. Okay, no, it's over. Oh no, is Roaring Moon about to roll us? Please, no. We're so close. We just need to survive enough for the toxic to, to, to tick it down. Ah, no. No, 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 no. We're so close. Do not do this to me. Gliscor needs to survive this hit. Stone Edge needs to miss. Stone Edge needs to miss. It went for Dragon Claw instead. Earthquake. Let's go, freaking heck, yes! Oh my god, Gliscor! I thought we lost that, 100%. I thought we completely lost that. I thought I completely screwed that up, but... Thankfully, Pokemon that I was deeming useless, wheezing, lands the Toxic, gets it weak, and then everything dies, except freaking Gliscor, and it clutches it out! Oh my god! Well, I guess that is how we beat... Pokemon Scarlet using only Pokemon from the region of Kitakami. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, slap like, hit subscribe. You know your boy's gonna be making content pretty much every single week at this point. So, I mean, why not subscribe if you like this, you'll like something else. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.